I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Hart, and this time, Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is going country. <laughs> country cooking, that is. <laughs> We're excited to have the chef from Louisville's Red Barn Kitchen with us. He's a master when it comes to Southern classics. Today, we'll do smoked brisket, their RBK mac and cheese, and we'll use leftovers to make old school Kentucky hand pies. All right, Kevin, and wait till you try my new concoction, the Red Barn Burner. It's a fire of a drink. That sounds good. It's all coming up right now at Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs before this live studio audience, and it starts right now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett. You are in for a treat today. We are located right here at our Bourbon Barrel Foods Kitchen Studio. This is in the heart of Butchertown. Today on the show, if you're a true Kentuckian, you'll love what they're doing at the Red Barn Kitchen here in Louisville. The restaurant is in Linden, in the same building that used to house Joe's Older Than Dirt. But it's all new now, and it's never tasted better. That's thanks in part to its executive chef, Reed Johnson, known all across the bluegrass as one of the best when it comes to cooking with smoke. We'll meet Reed and we'll get some of his secrets coming up. But first, as we always do, please help me welcome my co-host, my good friend, and America's chief entertaining <laughs> officer, Tim Lair. Hello, Hello, Timmy. Wow. You got, a, you got a long title. I know. It's, uh, <laughs> but anyway, you've been to the Red Barn Kitchen. Oh, yeah. Isn't it great? I'll tell you what, I'm so excited to have that there and, and everything, and I know this is one of your favorites. Well, I was getting ready to say, when I was reading the menu for today's show, the mac and cheese, you've, you've had it. I've had uh, it. It is so good. Incredible. And I'm glad to know we're going to learn how to make the secret, or learn how to make it and learn the secrets. So yeah. Let's not waste any more time. No, let's not. Thank you, Kevin. All right, it's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio. Here he is, the one and only. Love this guy, Chef Reed Johnson. <laughs> Hello, Chef. How you doing? Hello, buddy. Good to see you. Reed, good to see you. Good to uh, I'll tell you, what an office you have to work from. I mean, it really is incredible. I get a chance to peek into the kitchen at the Red Barn Kitchen. It, it is phenomenal. It's a beautiful space. Oh, my gosh. It's just gorgeous. And, and you've got those smokers going and everything happening. And it's just a wonderful place. I mean, when you walk through the door, that smoke just fills the air. And you're just, oh, it's, it's incredible. A magical feeling when you walk in. Uh, that, uh, the hickory and cherry smoke, we keep it rolling around there. It's starting to infuse into the walls a little bit. Uh, renovation was great down there. The place is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Chef Fernando's given me an awesome uh, place to work out of equipment in there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, we're going to find the secrets to one of your signature uh, dishes, or side dishes, uh -huh. I should say. We're going to start off uh, making our mac and cheese. We use uh, cavatappi pasta. It is one of the most creamy, indulgent, uh, better than your grandma's <laughs> mac and cheese. Right. Ever tasted. Oh, absolutely. What we'll do, we'll get a saute pan to get it hot. This is the same way we pick it up at the restaurant. And, and Kevin, this is better than the one in the blue box that you usually make at home. <laughs> yeah. Dump it in, add a little yeah. water, throw yeah. it in the microwave. And, and that yeah. fake seasoning stuff that comes out to <laughs> color it yellow. Trust me, you're right. <laughs> now the sauce that we use, um, which I brought a little bit over from the shop today, uh, but it's a blend of a creamy white cheddar and also an aged sharp cheddar, a little heavy cream. Mm. Uh, we start with a little bit of a roux in a pan, which is just equal parts butter and flour. Um, add the heavy cream in until we make uh, basically a bechamel and right. then we mound that with first the creamy uh, white cheese and then we add a little bit of the sharp cheddar. Wow. Um, heavy on uh, salt and cracked black pepper and then we enrobe the pasta with that. And you know the pasta, you, you talked about that was uh -huh. the uh, cavatelli was it? Cavatappi. Cavatappi. Yep. And I'll have a toppy. But anyway, mm -hmm. the, the, what I like about this has the grooves in there so it actually Goes right into that uh -huh. sauce, and it just picks up all the sauce around every single little noodle. Well, like, you you uh, have had it, haven't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. It's kind of like macaroni's big brother. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll take some of the sauce here, and uh, we'll get that warming up. And you guys, like you said, you, you experimented with all kinds of different uh, sauces until you came up with this one. We probably made 20 different variations before we decided to stick with this one. I uh, wish, shoot, Kevin, well, we weren't invited to you the uh, tasting. tasting uh, uh, right. <laughs> I think they got it right. Oh, they did. It's become one of our best sellers over there. It's actually on our um, app, app menu because the portion size is so substantial. Oh, okay. It's definitely enough to share. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Not if you go there with Kevin. <laughs> Red Barn's definitely a good place to overindulge with family and friends, that's for sure. It really is. It's a fun atmosphere, too. I, it, it's just amazing and, and comfortable. And mm. You've got an outside area. And, uh huh. Wow. Once we get the uh, cheese sauce hot, then we'll add a little bit of the pasta in. Cavatappi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never. It's a fun name. Fun it noodle. is fun name. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Well, that's the thing. See, you're working it around, so every little cavatappi gets a little toppy. You want all those noodles to kind of fill with the cheese sauce and also those grooves, the starch kind of comes out and the cheese sauce kind of clings. And uh, that's what really makes that sauce stick to the pasta. <laughs> you, can, you can tell the consistency of that because it is, it is definitely clinging. It's that's not, exactly uh, right. Wow. And once we get our pasta closed, we see the sauce kind of coming together and everything's getting hot and kind of marrying together. Uh, we'll start working on the garnish. Now the garnish, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with cheese curds, it's ultra, ultra young cheddar before it's pressed, which are delicious to snack they on. They are. Um, and we take these and basically we're gonna bread those and I brought some pre-breaded um, and we just use flour, egg wash, and then a real fine ground uh, panko breadcrumb. Uh, the flour that we use is our um, fried chicken flour actually. So it's got a little oh. extra kick and a little extra seasoning in there. Kind of gives it a little underlying flavor. And those just go straight in the deep fryer, 375. We try to fry them hot and quick because sometimes they'll start to pop on you. You don't want to lose any of that cheese from the inside. See, that's the that sounds good because they'll actually uh, be soft on the inside and that crunchy on the outside. This is great. Do you use these for anything else at the uh, Red Barn Kitchen or is exclusively to exclusively the mac and cheese? Exclusively for this, we do use the curds for a couple of other things. We have our RBK fritters, uh, okay. which we actually shred the cheese curds. Um, and then that's kind of turned into a uh, batter mix that we scoop and deep fry. Oh, and yeah. they puff up and they're kind of like uh, mozzarella sticks on steroids. You have some great sides too besides this one. Tell me about uh -huh. a couple of the other of your favorites. Uh, probably one of my favorite things down there are uh, our braised greens. It's a mix of collards oh, and kale. That's true, right. um, we keep them seasonal though. We change it up sometimes. If mustard greens are looking better, we use mustard greens. Try to try to get our greens locally when we can. Um, they're sweet, spicy, and sour. You mentioned the local part. You know, we are so Kentucky proud of all of our farmers and everybody that contributes to our restaurants. I know you guys are a big part of that too. Yeah, we, we try to as much as we can. Um, really, really uh, happy with all the Weissenberger Mills products. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, we're using Kenny's cheeses down there, um, local greens when we can. Big supporters of Creation Gardens, which people don't realize, I think, sometimes how much they actually locally source. We've been getting good Hoosier sweet corn in from those guys. Oh, that's great. Um, grateful <clears throat> greens, brings our salad greens in, and uh, one of our pea shoot garnishes on our hand pies is also coming from them. Well, it's so. important. It makes a difference to all of our farmers. Well, we pretty much have all of our components. It's a pretty simple dish. All right. Um, mac and cheese is hot and ready. We've got our curds fried up. Basically add these into these little crocks. I love these little metal crocks because at the restaurant we actually put these things back on the burner um, and try to send them to the table bubbling. So it then, comes bubbling hot. Mm -hmm, and you also get a little bit of that um, crispy um, cheese on the bottom of these stabs. That's like the prize at the, oh. at the bottom of the bowl. I've made my way to the bottom of the bowl many a time. <laughs> yeah. You didn't share either then, did you? No. <laughs> Once we get the stab filled up with all the uh, mac and cheese, we'll take the curds. And I'll try to pile just as absolutely as many as I can possibly <laughs> get on there. That's such a good thing. That's yeah. This great. becomes a game in itself right yeah. here. It's like Jenga. Yeah, the servers have a lot of fun <laughs> trying to get these to the Curd table sometimes. Jenga. They are uh, usually going everywhere by the time they get towards the uh, table with them. Oh, but, uh, that's it. Wow, that's cheese. delicious. Well, that's stop number one, but we're not finished there. <laughs> Tell everybody at home what you're going to cook when we come back. Well, when we come back, um, I'll show you guys how to put together my brisket rub. And then before the day's out, we're going to turn our mac and cheese and our brisket leftovers into our Kentucky ham pies. Oh, Perfect. That sounds good. I Tim Laird's revealing a secret to a cocktail he's made as well. That's coming up on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're cooking in the kitchen with Reed Johnson from Red Barn Kitchen when we come back. That looks so good. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We are having fun here in the kitchen studios. Uh, we're down at Butchertown. If you've ever been here before, Bourbon Barrel Foods is what we call home base. If you're looking for a seat in our studio audience, it's easy to find. You can go online. MintJuleptours.com is the place to visit. We're here with one of our studio audience members. Bonnie, nice to see you. Nice to see you. We've got a great crowd among you out here. Listen, everybody's having fun? Yeah. Now, here's the great part about the show. Everybody gets to eat at the end of the taping, but one person gets to come up and take a taste to see how the chef did. So we always like to have that audience taster. So okay. have you been to the Red Barn Kitchen yet? No. No, it's fabulous. And in fact, you've heard Tim and I raving over the mac and cheese yes. because 
frankly, we both really like this dish. I want you to take a taste. Okay. You'll see what we've been talking about through the whole show. Okay. Dig down in there and get some of that sauce and cheese. When they bring this out to the table, it literally is bubbling up. It is unbelievable. They put the fried cheese curds on top, and there it is, nice and cheesy. Yeah. Oh, I can taste it from here. I mean, now, yeah, nice, creamy. Taste the pepper. <laughs> Listen to me as though as I'm the one that took the taste. <laughs> it's fabulous. Isn't it? Mm hmm Yeah. Good. It's good. It's, it's good. <laughs> Buddy, you, you've had a chance to take a taste. You've seen the show before. Mm -hmm. You enjoy watching, mm -hmm. learning the secrets from chefs like mm -hmm. Reed Johnson. Mm -hmm. I want you to take this back to your table. I know you're here with quite a what? crowd. So what? What? <laughs> I, oh, I got it. Now, see, I'm, I, I'm going in. You want at least a cheese curd? Cheese curds, absolutely. Right, well, if Tim's going to touch it, I. <laughs> All right, get it out of here before we eat it. <laughs> Tim, I could eat a whole plate of those. That is so good, I'm, and, and I'll tell you what, it is unbelievable every time. So. I just need a little something to wash it down with. Right, I've got the perfect thing. Really? It's the Red Barn Burner. Nice. I'll tell you what, kind of a nice uh, play on uh, uh, the Red Barn Kitchen, but, and this is a really nice, uh, easy drink. A uh, couple ingredients is all you need, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it starts out, uh, the burn part is uh, the Jack Daniels Tennessee Fire. Kind okay. of a cinnamony. Uh, hot cinnamon, so to speak. So about an ounce and a half goes into a uh, glass with uh, rocks. They Boom. became popular a few years ago. They That's the right. Fire. Yep. And then three ounces of cranberry juice. And this is very important. You want to uh, get a good squeeze of lime. That goes in. Now, if you really want a barn burner, you could actually take one of these ghost pepper chilies and put that in a shaker with uh, just sli one little, sli little slice. Put that in the shaker with the uh, Tennessee Fire wow. and cranberry juice, shake it, pour it in there, and you get a little heat, a little more heat, but I kind of like it as is, so cheers. Let's see how we did. You didn't shake mine with one of those peppers, did you? No, I <laughs> No, <laughs> I've, I've seen this work before. Mm. Very nice. nice. Cinnamon, a little bit just of heat. perfect. It's just Cinnamon. perfect. You know, not too... Not no. too cinnamon. And All there right. you go. So we've, we've learned the mac and cheese. We've learned the barn burner. But we're not finished yet. Nope. We're sure not. I'm Let's slide back over to Reed. All right. Chef Reed, what's coming up next? Uh, we're going to talk brisket for a little while. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. The uh, brisket that we use, um, we're using uh, certified Black Angus Choice or Prime when we can get them. So we trim that down to right about a quarter of an inch overall. That gives us enough fat to kind of base the meat, uh, but not so much uh, that there's anything uh, we're going to lose flavor on when we go to slice it. We smoke them maybe 12 to 16 hours, depending on the size. Okay. Um, people say it's always 12 hours or always 10 hours. Uh, you know, it's, it's when it's done. And we cook those up till they hit 205 degrees. Ooh. 205 on the dot gives you a perfect slice that's not going to fall apart. Like I say, usually it's 12, 14, maybe 16 hours. And we um, mentioned at the very beginning of the show that, you know, you're so renowned as, around with using smoke to cook. How, where'd that come from? You know, it's something I grew up with. Um, I'm from Western Kentucky, down around Owensboro, from a town okay. called Madisonville. Um, Dad always had a pit, my uncle always had a pit. Anytime there were family holidays going on, we all kind of gathered around the good stuff, you know, as a big family. Um, moved to Louisville, got into doing a little bit more fine dining stuff, you know, went to Sullivan, um, and then realized I really just wanted to do what I grew up with. That's great. Um, and now this is kind of my, it's my third, third smoke project. Nice. So, um, I'll show you guys how to put together our rub. Um, my rubs are intense. A lot of rubs are really, really heavy on the sugar and salt, and they're just overly sweet. Um, I'm not a sweet guy. I actually am at heart, but uh, <laughs> I like the spice, I like the bold flavors. Um, now it's a large cut of meat, these things are usually 10 to probably 14 pounds, so we do need quite a bit of salt. Um, ratio wise, it's probably uh, maybe 15 to 20% salt. Um, we also need some sugar um, because we need that coating to kind of um, absorb on the outside. Um, I use light brown sugar. Quite a few spices go into this, um, obviously we need a little bit of backbone. So we use some cayenne pepper, Ooh, nice. a little bit of sweet, a little bit of heat. Um, also, I like the chili flavor, so I also add a little bit more sweet paprika. Um, and that also helps give you that really, really good crust. Probably one of uh, the less common flavors that a lot of people use in rubs. I actually use some cumin. Oh, uh, I'm a taco nut, I love Mexican yeah. food, and a little bit of that cumin goes really, really well with the brisket. Um, also, I love pastrami, so some coriander has found its way in. <laughs> Some of your own loves are going into this. All, my love goes into all the food that we do at Red Barn. That's I think great. that's why it gives us a, kind of a unique flavor profile. Um, 
and generous amounts of all this, man. Yeah. It's covering well, it's that, that covering outside, it, right? It's a lot of spice. Um, onion and garlic powder. Um, you know, you can't really use fresh when it comes to this. It's all about the dry ingredients when it comes to these rubs. Um, and then a little bit more heat. I like to see the cracked black pepper on the outside of a brisket, so right. we use quite a bit of black pepper as well. Um, and brisket, there's not really any secret to that. Just kind of get your hands in there and work it around. And, uh, you know, the brown sugar will clump a little bit. I have a big sifter at work. I run this through a sifter at the end just to make sure I don't oh, have any, no any clumps. extra clumps. Yeah, if you have extra clumps of brown sugar and stuff, sometimes they'll over caramelize on the outside. So we usually run it through a sifter one time, but it's not necessary. I brought a brisket over today. We had them on the pit last night, and they just came off right before I left the shop. So uh, See, and that rub gives it that nice crust on the outside, right? That's what's yeah. going on with that thing? And it, it looks very crusty, but it's also very tender, tender. and moist. After you make your rub. Uh -huh. And you rub it. Do you let it sit for a little bit, or is you okay to go I right do. on the I smoke? I like I like to age them a little bit. I usually pop them out of the um, the cryo vac when they come in, and we'll trim them up and then rub them. And I try to let them sit about 24 hours okay. before they smoke, and just to kind of let those flavors marry in. Okay. Um, and if it all does soak in, we'll usually rub them one more time before they go on the oh. pit. <laughs> Best part's usually right in the middle, so we'll just hack this guy open. Look how juicy that is! I know. Is. Just I like know. Just pop. Oh, oh. you see me? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Wow. This has got to be a popular dish. It, uh... it is something that we've become really well known for. I was always a pork guy growing up, but so many people have so much trouble with briskets and ours, honestly, they just come out damn near perfect every time. They are uh, absolutely gorgeous. God, it's, per just per it's perfect. It is. This one. I, I, I've actually judged a couple of uh, barbecue contests and uh, Kansas City certified, by the way. And yeah. this is. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, look at this. Oh. It doesn't need sauce, but to action it a little bit, our uh, bourbon barbecue sauce is absolutely delicious. It's one of our sweetest yeah. sauces. Oh, nice. We're not finished with the show yet, though. Coming up, if we have leftovers, we make pan pies? If we do, we'll, we'll make some pan pies together. All right. We'll see if we do. We've got a two-minute commercial break here, so the odds are we may not have any leftovers, Tim. <laughs> so stay with us and find out. We're coming right back. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harden, and we are cooking today and learning the secrets from Reed Johnson from the Red Barn Kitchen. Uh, this has been a fun show so far, but now we get a chance to take these leftovers that we may have and make something well, quite creative. Absolutely. These are kind of inspired by one of my grandmother's old uh, treats, too. We used to pick fruit in the orchards all the time, and uh, she would make fried pies for us. Nah. If we picked the fruit, she'd make the fried, fried pies. pies. Um, so we did a kind of a savory twist on that leftover brisket. We'll take a little bit of that. Obviously, we've got a little bit of leftover mac and cheese. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, just a little, <laughs> just a little bit. Enough for about one pie. Uh, you know, next day, take that cold brisket, which would also make good sandwiches, uh, but just to give it a little bit more flair. We dice that up. That goes in with your mac and cheese. Now we're going to need to mix that up and we're trying to make this uh, kind of a little bit of a tighter mix and we need to add a little bit more flavor. I want to add a little bit of spice, a little sweet and a little sour. So we'll put just a little bit of our bourbon barbecue sauce in there. Which really does have bourbon. A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> we make about a four gallon batch at a time and it gets a uh, uh, full handle of bourbon in it. So Ooh. cook most of it off, a little splash right at the end. But that'll come together. You got your pasta, you have your brisket in there, mac and cheese sauce. Sometimes we'll refrigerate that too overnight, just let it tighten up a little bit more uh, at the restaurant, and it comes out looking like this. Mm, beautiful. Now time to make the pies. All right. Uh, my wonderful sous chef, Amanda Johnson, and also my pastry chef makes my pie doughs for me daily. Um, we punch those out, and we need a little bit of egg wash to make those guys stick. Egg wash is just egg, um, basically mixed up like you were going to make scrambled eggs. Put just a little bit of that around the edges. It's great that you guys make that in-house too. That's uh... all of our biscuits, all of our jams, all of our pies. We do right there at Red Barn every morning. We take an ice cream scoop. We just scoop a little bit of this pie dough in. Easy to put too much. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a good portion. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that much is gonna make it in there, but we'll see. We'll share the love a little bit. And then we're just going to fold these over like baby moons. Well, I'm glad to see the art isn't lost. You know, I learned a lot of stuff from my grandma as well. She was a great cook, uh, but like potato cakes, you know, using the leftover stuff from the mm -hmm. next oh, yeah. day. That's, 
I love that. Some of the best best things you eat are made from uh, you know yesterday's dinner. Yeah, and we canned everything back Did then, you? so you don't do that anymore. You know, most people don't. No, I don't either. <laughs> my, my grandmother was a horrible cook, so I had to learn myself. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets revealed. I, <laughs> well, you did well for yourself. I had to. Mine was an excellent cook. We, we swapped roles. Mine was an excellent. Now I can't cook a thing. Basically, pies are it's as easy as that. That looks easy. That looks beautiful. And uh -huh. of course, uh, we obviously need to crisp these guys up, so we've got right. the deep fryer back on. All right. Um, and we're going to drop these in the deep fryer because what better way to make a pie than uh, to drop them Fry. in the deep fryer? <laughs> That's right. You have desserts too uh, at the Red Barn Kitchen. We right? have some delicious desserts. Um, our banana pudding is one of my absolute favorites. Oh, as we talked about all the savory things, but I'll tell you what, you get wonderful desserts. The peanut butter pie is also excellent. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> We'd have a uh, bourbon ball ice cream on top of that. While they're frying, we'll talk garnish. We make a really excellent Alabama white sauce, and I like to just put a pretty substantial uh, puddle of that stuff right in the bottom of the bowl. We make this uh, grilled corn relish uh, oh, with preserved tomatoes. Really good. Yep. And uh, we also garnish on top with a little bit of that. And I've also got some grateful greens pea shoots here just to green it up a little bit. We'll pull those up, let the grease drain just for a second. That looks so good. Just a little bit of salt over the top. Now they're going to go into the puddle. Into the white, into the white sauce. <clears throat> That's when things really get good. Oh. A little bit of the tomato corn relish over the top. Mm. All right, I've got two new things to try the next time I go to the That's right. Red Barn Kitchen. These are probably one of our best selling apps. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't tried this appetizer, so mm. I'm excited. Just a few pea shoots. Not only, not only for garnish, but you can eat these. They're delicious. They are absolutely delicious. Okay. Nice and fresh. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Chef Reed Johnson, Red Barn Kitchen. Tell right. folks where you're located. <laughs> We're on New LaGrange Road, uh, right there at the intersection of Her Lane. It's easy to find. It's the former Joe's Older Than Dirt. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful place, and we appreciate you being here to share some of your secrets. Thank you, sir. Great right. job, Chef. Appreciate it. We appreciate everybody at home for watching. To our studio audience, thank you all for being here. If you're looking to be a part of that, it's easy to do. Log on right now. Check it out at mintjulieptours.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.